Security has been over this room with a fine tooth comb, Mitchell. And aside from the knife from Branca's back and fingerprints, we found nothing. What time was Branca killed? About 7 o'clock this morning. It's nearly 2.30 now. That's about seven and a half hours ago. It seems incredible. What's incredible? How this could have happened. High Point was one of the most closely guarded testing stations in the United States. How this man could have gotten in here is beyond me. Well, he got in. Did he take anything? Just four years of hard work and development. What do you mean? The landmine that Manker was working on. Have you thought about an inside job? What? Have you checked your own people? There were fingerprints left by the killer, and they didn't match any in our files. Well, my guess is that the killer worked his way in from the outside. And right now, he's probably traveling in the opposite direction very fast. But how? Where would he travel to? High Point is 50 miles from the nearest settlement, and there are checkpoints at every entrance. Well, then our character is either hiding out somewhere in the desert, or he slipped into some vehicle that took him outside of the area. I'd guess that he made it outside. So do I, but we searched the whole area, and there isn't a trace of him. Well, assuming he did make it outside. We ought to be able to catch up with him in 24 hours. But Mitchell. We don't have 24 hours. Uh-oh. Now what? Hmm. No, no, don't touch it. It's extremely sensitive. What is it? It's the landmine that Manker was working on. This morning at 6 o'clock, this and one other we're set for tests to go to 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. You mean that thing is going to go off automatically in 24 hours? Oh, <laughs> great. Where's the other one? The killer has it. And in just 15 hours and 29 minutes, wherever the killer may be, there'll be an explosion greater than a 1,000-pound bomb. Oh, this is a real sweet one. Our boy is carrying a firecracker that his bosses want, only it's lit and he doesn't know it. Is there any possibility that he might have flown in and landed near here in the desert? No, we have complete air coverage over this field. Hmm. What about the buses and the commercial planes and the trains? Well, there's a snowbird, a streamliner that goes over the pass from here to Seattle every day. What time does it leave? Oh, you've lost her. She left at 8 this morning before Branca's body was found. Oh, great. And the killer could be on it. Let's see. The snowbird's next stop is Crest City, isn't it? At 4 o'clock this afternoon. Okay. You gotta have me flown there. By four. It'll be a bit close. That's over 200 miles. Well, do our best. Just a minute, Mitchell. In case you should run across your man, you may find this useful. What is it? It's a Geiger counter. Oh, one of those things that measure radioactivity. It'll tell me if I get close, huh? It isn't that easy. There's very little radiation until shortly before the explosion. Oh, <laughs> this should be fun. So long. 
Ten minutes later, my plane takes off from the testing ground airstrip at High Point. We pass over Yellow Flat and pick up the train just as it's coming into Crest City. I arrive two minutes before the train and hop aboard just as it pulls out. All right, you just made it. Yeah, you would be on time. Snowbird is always on time. We're doing Seattle tomorrow at 5 p.m. and we'll be in Seattle at 5 p.m. You want to bet? I might as well take your ticket now if you... Uh... I didn't have time to get one. You got any accommodations left? Well, let's see. All we got left is, is a compartment. That'll be $64.92. That includes the tax. Uh, would you like to see it? Yeah. Conductor, I was in sort of a hurry to get to Crest City to catch the train. I left my travel orders at High Point. Look, no free rides. Either you hustle $64.92 or you're going to spend the winter at our next water stop. Will that do? Hey, where till I tell Mac about this? The snowbird's getting famous, a federal investigator. Who's Mac? Mac's the engineer. Conductor, you're telling no one who I am, you understand? Sure, Mr. Mitchell, if you say so. That's right. Now, will you show me that $64.92 plus tax compartment? Yes, sir. Looking for somebody aboard the Snowbird, Mr. Mitchell? Well, could be, Conductor. Have you got a list of the passengers that got on at Yellow Flat? Uh, let's see. Uh, had a big crowd out of there today. Weekend, you know. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Mitchell, uh, Conductor learns to remember faces and sort of spot people that are, well, you know. Peculiar? Yeah, that's it, peculiar. Have you noticed anybody on this train that you'd say was peculiar? Well, no, I... Hey, I sure have. They're up in the club car now. Let's go. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, Are those the three, people that you thought were four, peculiar? Well, don't they strike ten, you peculiar? They well, call themselves Madame Burlet's Ballet one, Interpreters or something two, like that. It's three, ballet. Four, well, ballet or ballet. Six, I wish they'd taken some other train beside two, the Snowbird. Three, they drove everybody four, out of the club car five, with those shenanigans. Six, Can't you one, toss them out? Two, three, Nobody four, tosses them out of out. No, 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 me net. Don't you remember Madame Pavlova distinctly writes that the... But mon frappé, the heels should always be together. I'm sorry, Madame Barlow, but I do not feel well. She doesn't feel well. Tomorrow night we're opening in Seattle. Oh, that's bad. Bad? It's tragic, young man. Why should I, Madame Barlow, be confronted with such problems? Oh, why didn't I stay in Yellow Flat? You know, that's just what I wanted to talk to you about. Who is this man? Well, this is Mr. Uh, uh, just curious. Well, there's nothing to conceal about it. You can ask anybody in Yellow Flat. The dance there, they do not understand. In other words, they stunk. Oh. How many in your uh, troupe, Madame Berlow? They are my troupe. Oh, you've been together very long? Sometimes I think much too long, seven months. Uh. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, did you learn anything, Mr. Mitchell? Oh, yeah, loads. A very attractive man. Attractive, indeed. Yes, and he's the kind that you read about. Regular cloak and dagger feller. He chose the snowbird to ride on. A very attractive man. Come on, girls. Once more, the arabesque. One, two, three, four. Allons, allons, voyons, l'arabesque, mes enfants. Les jambes en l'air, hein, enfin. Je vous ai dit 36 000 fois de ne pas faire ça. Combien de fois qu'il faut que je vous dise comment le faire? Mais vous, vous, vous me faites absolument folle, vous, les enfants. Là, maintenant, ça, ça va bien. Maintenant, l'arabesque. Voilà. So, Madeline, uh, she's my wife. Madeline says, uh, who are you trying to kid? Nobody plays poker all night and half the morning. Who's a dame? Dame, she said. So I tell her I'm going to Seattle on a little vacation. Get away from her in Yellow Flat. <clears throat> when she wants me back and can cut out the act, okay, I'll consider it. Then she says, uh, All right, all right, that'll do. You don't want me no more? I don't want you no more. Wait a minute. 
What is this? Never mind. That's all. Hmm? There's 22 you've talked to, Mr. Mitchell. You ready for the next one? Their stories are all so pat, so believable. I haven't had anyone yet give me any reason to feel that they weren't telling the truth. Well, Yellow Flats a small town. It'd be hard to lie and get away with it. You sure you've kept all the rest of the passengers in their compartments, not allowed them to talk with each other? Mr. Mitchell, I've been on the Snowbird for 20 years, and I get a job to do, I do it. Right. All right, all right. Go get 23. That will not be necessary. I am already here. Oh, hello, Matt. Come in. I've waited a long time to see you. That'll be all, Mother's little helper. Sit down. All right, Nanette. What did you want to talk about? Well, maybe it does not mean anything, but I thought I should mention it to you, to someone in authority with the law. You know who I am? Well, in the club car today, the conductor, he... Never mind. I understand. It is about this man, Kurt Manta. I saw him on the train. Who's Kurt Manta? He is a man of great talent and little honor. He worked with my brother in the chemical plant back home until he was apprehended selling secret information to the highest bidder. You think I might be after this man? <laughs> Kurt does not make a trip to America for no reason. You've got a reason, all right. Manette, I want you to point this man out to me. One stipulation, Mr. Mitchell. If I point this man out to you, you must protect me. A life means nothing to Kurt Manter. The best way you have of protecting your life, Manette, is to lead me to him. I can only point him out to you. I do not know his compartment. All right. Oh, uh, conductor, have you got a chair car on this train? No, sir. Could you tell me the number of Kurt Manter's room? Kurt Manter. There's no Manter on this train. He would change his name. All right, let's go, Manette. Where are you going? Back to the last coach. I want everyone on this train to meet Manette. Oh, they'll be pleased. There are lots of coaches. It'll take a long time. Yeah. Maybe too long. I don't make it. Oh, five and nine. Yeah, yeah. Hold it, Joe. I don't care if that cold front is closing in or not. I want every pilot in the air at dawn. Anything that even looks like a man in the prohibitive area is to be reported. Yeah, Tim. Patrol 7. They just covered sections 5 and 9. Well? Not even a jackrabbit. Get me the sheriff's station at Fallbrook, California. Five, nine. And the whole area is clear. Yes, sir. Check and double check. Hello. Hello? Sheriff Mortot speaking. I'm bothering you again, sir. Can we help you, sir? I'm afraid you'll have to. The Snowbird is due in your town at 5 this morning. That's a little less than four hours from now. I want you to flag it down. The killer must be on that train. Uh, so as you take everybody off, search them. If you don't find the mine, get everybody away from the train. The whole thing will blow sky high at six sharp. I got bad news, Dr. Minton. Yeah? The snowbird won't get to Fallbrook. There's been an avalanche 40 miles up the crest. In the next hour or so, they're going to get stalled until help arrives. Well, how soon could help get to them? Five or six hours, with a load of luck. There's nothing more we can do. The rest is up to Mitchell. I said 14 coaches and not a bite. I'm sorry that we have not found Kurt Manta, but I am certain he is on this train. Well, if he isn't in here, our only chance is the club car. I'm sorry to get you out of bed, Mr. Uh... Spitz. Carl Spitz. <laughs> well, I'm Steve Mitchell. This young lady seems to think she has a friend on the train, and... Uh... I'm sorry. 
This is the wrong compartment. I do not know this man. Oh, well, I'm sorry too, Mr. Spitz. Probably all right. Mr. Mitchell, you keep looking at your watch. Are you getting off soon? The end of the line for this train is a lot closer than Seattle, Manette, believe me. What happened? I don't know. Let's go find out. Conductor, what happened? Avalanche. The train's buried up to the windows. How soon will we get out? Well, I've seen these things get pretty bad. It might take days. Why don't you and the young lady find a seat somewhere? I'm going to keep everybody in one place. No moving from coach to coach. I'm going to conserve heat until help arrives. But we've got to go back to the club car. Well, you've got it all to yourselves. Everybody must be in bed but you two. Well, I guess that's the end of the wild goose chase, Manette. But I know I saw Kurt Manton on this train. Look, we've talked to every passenger from the engine to the club car. Well, looks like my hunch was wrong. I guess we left the danger back in Crest City. You mean what you are looking for is back at Crest City? Yeah, beginning to look that way. I'm going back to the club car. Why don't you get some sleep? Enter, my dear. I was hoping we could renew our acquaintance. Was it merely an acquaintance, Kurt? Well, after all, if the woman I've known so well brings in the police for an early morning chat, I can only assume that our acquaintanceship has somewhat changed. But I'm very happy that you feel sorry for what you almost have done. Like old times, Manette. I'm glad to have you back again. I am not back again, Kurt. I have come to bleed you of everything you own. So my empty-headed little Manette has become a woman of business. Tell me, what is this thing that I've done that you're going to blackmail me for? I do not know. But Mitchell is most anxious to find someone on his train. I imagine it is you. Possibly for that little box you put in your bag. Possibly. And what do you want from me? You are selling whatever it is to someone or some country. You will be paid well. I want half. If I should refuse, my darling. Mitchell is only one car away. It is now 10 minutes after 5. You have 20 minutes to decide. Time is it, Tim? Five thirty, sir. Thirty more minutes to go. Why doesn't that Tunerville trolley have a radio transmitter and receiver? The snowbirds probably snowed in on the crest by now. What about our planes? Even the birds are grounded. All right. Security. Any news? Rescue parties are on their way to the crest, sir. But it's hopeless. Even if they get through, they wouldn't make it in time. Then there's only a slim chance. Release any information regarding the theft to the broadcasting stations. Maybe it's just possible somebody has a radio aboard. But Mitchell told me that... I don't care what Mitchell told you. Do it. die. But Claudine, my dear, this is the 20th century. Such things don't happen. Well, let's have a little music. Things were a lot tougher last night, but you didn't know it. Well, uh, 
the time is uh, 5.45 a.m. This is old Night Beat Barney, rounding the last turn in another bebop sesh from good old KGOL, Midland, California, the little city by the sea. And now let's chop at a few special announcements, Dad, while you play leapfrog over your Adam's apple with that dull razor of yours. Well, let's... Hey, hey here's a real piece of stuff. Any of you guys and gals who had plans of taking the snowbird out of here this morning to Seattle might as well go back to bed. She's snowbound in the pass. Uh, rescue parties are on the way to the train now. <laughs> There's a life. Snowbound on a fancy train. Pretty girls, good food, no worries. Not a bad deal, huh, kids? Well, on with some more J-A-Z-Z. Now, see if you can guess this one. You heard what the man said, Claudine. The rescue party is on the way. The rescue parties are always on their way. But that does not keep those to be rescued from dying. The young lady is quite right, Mitchell. Death doesn't wait for rescue parties. <laughs> Shut your thing up! Shut your thing up! Do you hear it's driving me crazy? <laughs> Folks, I'm interrupting our music to bring you a special bulletin from the High Point Testing Station in Nevada. If anyone aboard the streamliner, the Snowbird, is listening to this program, please deliver this message to Steve Mitchell, special agent who was on the train. The mine is... I will repeat that message. Tell Steve Mitchell the following. The mine is aboard the train. The mine is aboard the train. Evacuate the train. Evacuate the train. Well, okay, listeners. Now on with the dumpy jump from here at KGOL at exactly 12 minutes to 6 on Tuesday morning. Can I see you a minute, Mr. Mitchell? Sure. <laughs> Minette. Hey, what time have you got, Minette? 5.50. We've just got 10 minutes to save the lives of everybody on that train. Listen, there's a stolen landmine hidden aboard that train. Now, you take the first six coaches and I'll take the last six coaches. Get all the passengers off and scatter them as much as possible. But we can't move the people. Why not? On account of the avalanche. It has us hemmed in on the front and in the back and on the side. What's the matter with this side? It's no good. 20 feet from here is Monument Gorge. 500 feet straight down. Well, we only got one chance. Take care of this, will you? Go okay. on. This is just great. Only 10 minutes left and I don't have a single lead. Then all of a sudden a little sound starts pecking away at my brain. At first it doesn't register, but then I peg it. Something's ticking. Manette did know that you were Kurt Manter. We'll all be dead if you don't believe me when I tell you that mine is armed and set to go off at six o'clock sharp. What kind of a fool do you take me for, Mitchell? I'll call you bluff. Let's see if we blow up as you predict.
brother. Talk about the nick of time. One more second would have been too, too many. Then I spotted the snow plow chewing its way towards us in big hunks. That means we'll be out of cold storage in time for lunch. Time. All of a sudden, that's a wonderful word again. Thank you.